<clears throat> you know, in the Nicene Creed, we'll say the words that we believe in things seen and unseen. We'll say the words that we believe in things seen and unseen. So I see you, I see my hands, I see the physical reality of this church. But also there are things that we don't see. Well, if I don't see it, so does it exist? You know, it's a mentality that unless I see it or it enters under my domain of description and definition, it doesn't exist. You know, that <clears throat> there, and that, that's, that's a little bit of the problem, you know, that unless I, unless, if everything has to be according to my interpretation, then I'm creating a world that's only according to <clears throat> Father Tony. But the reality is, there's a lot of things that I don't see. There's things that I miss. That's why I should give people the benefit of the doubt. There's a lot of things I don't know. And you, just because I don't see it, that doesn't mean it's not there. You know, take, for instance, your guardian angels. Well, I don't see them. I don't believe in some of that stuff. You know, and see, see what happens when, when, we, when we only take the perspective of a realist, of a person that can only, unless you can prove them, there's so much you miss in life. Even your faith, there, there's, there's a lot of, there's going to be so much about your faith that you're going to die before you understand everything about your faith. You aren't going to under, understand everything about your Catholic faith. That doesn't mean you should stop trying to understand. And so there are realities around us. There's good, as I said, there's good angels, but there's evil. You know, the catechism says that the evil creates disorder. And how God creates order. And how evil spends its time trying to create disorder. And how, and how we are brought into this world, brothers and sisters, it's a fight. When we, from the moment we, we exist in this world... It, as a Christian, I have, it's not that I'm expecting doom all the time, but as a Christian, I know, especially from the time that I'm baptized, I know I'm in for a battle. I know I'm in a battle. Okay, now, and if you don't, if you don't understand that, it's kind of like this. Have you ever heard of carnival cruises? Have you ever heard of carnival cruises? They're just sailing a, along the, some of those are Mediterranean cruises, some of them are Caribbean cruises. Carnival cruises, they're just sailing along. And they do not expect any type of retaliation from anyone. Carnival cruises does not expect any retaliation from an outside entity at all, either from a, a, a cruise missile, from a, a submarine. They don't expect it. So, you know, during World War II, when Nazi Germany was shooting some of these cruise liners in the Atlantic Ocean, well, what's going on here? I'm a cruise liner. I'm a cruise liner. Why are you shooting at me? Why are you shooting at me? 
But if you're a battleship, you're expecting retaliation. And you're ready for it. You, you don't expect anything different. It's coming. I don't know when, but it's coming. You're going to, it's, you're going to get yours. It's coming. If you're out on the sea, if you're a ship out on the sea, you're going to get it. And you're going to get it good, and it's going to be a sneaky way. See the difference, brothers and sisters? If I'm a Christian, and if I think I'm a carnival cruise liner, why are you hitting me? Why are you hitting me? Why is this stuff happening to me? Why, why wouldn't it happen to you? Especially if you're a Christian. You're a marked target. You think you're going to hide and get away with it? But if you come as a battle cruiser, it's like, I'm ready. I know it's coming. I, I'm ready for it to happen. I, I'm, just, I'm just waiting for it to happen. Well, Father Tony, you can't live your life like that. Well, if you aren't ready... If you aren't prepared, some of you who's ever been in the scouts, you, you're ready, you know things are going to happen. And if you're unprepared, don't expect me to feel sorry for you. You know it's going to happen. It's going to get cold out. So you, know that you knew that you were going camping. You knew as a scout you were going camping, and you knew it was going to be at least, the high was going to be 50 degrees out. You didn't, you didn't pack a, a simple cap, a, a knitting cap for your head. You know it's going to happen. You know you're going to get cold. See, and, and that's the thing as Christians. At times we live naively in the world. We, we, just, we, we just act like we're rag dolls. And we, we, don't, we don't, we aren't ready for battle when the Satan, and he's real, He's not from Walt Disney, everybody. He's real. And when Satan comes after us and he starts throwing things at us, you know, we have to understand that's a reality, even though I can't see him. But I know he exists. Believe me, I, I sat in that confessional and I can tell you he exists. And I'm not going to... And I'm not going to break the seal of confession. I'm not going to tell you who sinned and what they sinned. But I can tell you what. There's, there's evil in the world. That's ready to get you. And there's some, there's some weaknesses in our metal. As Christians, there's some weaknesses in our metal. There are certain sins that people have a proclivity to. It's very real. It's very enticing. It's very addictive. And what we have, brothers and sisters, God sustains us. He gives us, number one, His Word, God's Word. As I said, it, it keeps us out of traps. It motivates us. It challenges us. And if I'm not in God's word, I'm not, I'm not aware of my enemy's tactics. And you, you, have to be, you, have to be, you have to be attentive. Brothers and sisters, you and I are on sabotage missions. You and I are going behind enemy lines as Christians. We're on sabotage missions and we're going to sabotage the devil in his kingdom. You want to do that? I hope you do. Because that's what you're about as a Christian. You're a sabotager. You're a sabotager. You're going behind enemy lines and you've got to be sneaky as a Christian. And when your enemy, the Satan comes at you, you don't be a... You don't be a rag doll and act like a simpleton. Why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to me? This is a battle you're in in life as a Christian. It's nothing other than that. 
you won't have rest until you die. Probably about 15 minutes after you die, that's when you have rest. And I hope it's in heaven. If it's not in heaven, I hope you get to purgatory. Okay? And so we see here, God gives us his word. He'll give us his body and blood to strengthen us. And, you know, it must be important. I don't know. If it's not important, why would, you, why would we put it here? If it's not important, why would we put it here? The Divine Mercy Chaplet. If it's not important, why would we have that picture here? That seems to be working for some people in this parish. At 3 o'clock or at 10 o'clock, whenever you go to bed. You know, in the rosary. You know, there's, there's 52 clips. You know, 52 Hail Marys. It's the poor man's psalm book. And the, brothers and sisters... I can tell you that people have addiction to pornography and sexual lust. Your your counselor is not going to be the... You can't depend just on your counselor that you pay $100 an hour for. That's going to help you. But if you don't get divine assistance, have divine assistance, when you're dealing with addiction, you're a sitting duck. You're a sitting duck... And you're ready, you're ready, you're ready to get taken over, to get deeper and deeper and deeper and lost in that pit. So we have these, we have these weapons, brothers and sisters, and we got to use them. <clears throat> and we got to be prepared. We got to be prepared. And if there's some things in your life that's occupying so much of your time that you can't pray. Maybe you need to let throw some of the, those things out of your B-52 plane. you got to lighten your load somehow. There's some things that it's... If, 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 you're enti- if your days from now until next Sunday, you don't have enough time to pray, you got to find a way to do it. At least pray the rosary every day, because I know most of you don't go to Mass every day. Okay? you got to pray the rosary every day, brothers and sisters. You'll never make it. This Christian life, you're going to be disappointed and sad. So let's take Jesus' body and blood, realize that that's enough to get from today that you take the body and blood of Jesus... That's going to be enough sustenance to get you to Sunday. That's going to help you get to Sunday. And then on, in the meantime, do something to help yourself and help your soul. <clears throat>